Welcome back to Strong Man Personal Finance. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Christopher Belly. I'm a certified CPA accountant. I'm a long-term boglehead investor. I'm author of the book Stop Being a Broke Loser. It's on Amazon. And today, we're going to do a reaction to a leaked video from none other than Jeremy Lefebvre, Jeremy Financial Education's amazing course that will teach you how to 20x stocks in five days or something like that now as we all know jeremy financial education became famous on youtube because he bought tesla stock before it had the massive run-up and a lot of people when they see those massive returns they're immediately enticed and sucked into his orbit of degeneracy and grifting why because he got freaking lucky that's right now, in this video, there's some interesting stuff. Now, I haven't watched the whole thing. We're going to watch it together. And I'm going to react to why Jeremy bought Tesla stock. Because in this video, he just talks about his thesis. Why I bought it. What was I thinking? This is my rationale of why I put a very small speculative bet in Tesla. And remember, he did not put a lot of money in Tesla. It was a small speculative bet. And he got extremely lucky. And if you look at his portfolio... His Tesla returns are enormous. He blew it out of the water. I'll give him that. But it's all about the methodology. Can you replicate what Jeremy Financial Education did? I argue you can't, or if you do, it's based out of sheer luck. So let's watch this. If my camera freezes, I'm sorry. I didn't want to do this live because I wanted to make sure the audio came in well. If my camera freezes, get over it. Let's watch the video. Holy smokers, dude. Holy smokers. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so I want to do a valuable video that I don't think I've ever really done, honestly, before. I think this video is going to help out a lot of you guys tremendously in how I value a growth stock. Oh, growth my oath! Let me guess, revenue my avenue, futuristic. So, first off, um, you got to look into all of the fundamentals first, right? Fundamentals. Did he just spell, isn't it fundamentals? <laughs> Maybe I'm crazy. Hold on a second. Fundamentals. Fundamentals. Fund, um, he, the freaking idiot spelled fundamentals wrong. That's his first mistake right there. This shows he's a gas station manager and a Walgreens toilet plunger. You got to look at, obviously, income statement, balance sheet, you know, management team, all those things I teach in course curriculum. So you're looking into all that, same as any stock, a dividend stock, value stock. You're always looking at the fundamentals, what's going on with the business model. Do you believe in the business model? Do you think it's going to trend, you know, positively over the coming years? Do you think it's likely the company's going to grow? Uh, do you think it's... Hmm, he's looking at the fundamentals. That's interesting because a lot of the stocks that he bought, I don't see the fundamentals. And I'm trained to look at financial statements. I have certifications, actual professional certifications. And when I look at some of his stupid freaking stocks that he buys, it makes no sense. What fundamentals, dork? Fundamentals. It's pretty unlikely the company's going to shrink. What's your risk reward? All those sorts of things. You know, everything I cover, right? But then you get to this decision where you're looking at a stock and it's a certain valuation. You have to decide, is it worth buying the stock or, or selling the stock? And this is why teaching growth stock investing is the hardest thing i've always had to do essentially it's pretty easy i don't want to say easy but it's not a problem for me to really teach value investing stocks looking for this type of forward p and those sorts of things but what about the company that has huge potential future growth but they're forward pe so basically you're just guessing you you go and look at an analyst guess guess of what the earnings are in the future now, go look at anim, anim, analyst estimates on websites like, what's that freaking website called? There's tons of websites where analysts look at, uh, or they, they, they give their estimates and stock price targets. They're a joke. So by using forward PE, you're just relying on a bunch of freaking clowns. If you want to analyze a value stock, you actually need to do some kind of model. Plug your assumptions into a model like Everything Money does or my crappy little Excel model. That at least gives you a snapshot of what the company's worth. But by just looking at forward PE, I mean, what, what are you doing? You're just relying on some freaking clown with a bachelor's in finance because, you know, accounting was too hard to tell you where a company's earnings are going to be. And guess what? Nobody knows the future. They're unprofitable right now. 
things like that. It's tough, okay? So let me give you an example of a company, uh, Tesla, right? Tesla! So here's how I thought about this one valuation-wise, why I decided to make that decision to buy that. So when I bought Tesla, I think it was roughly around a $40 billion market cap. Could have been a little less, could have been a little more. Around $40 billion. So how do I come up with a judgment that this company that was losing money when I bought it is worth buying? at $40 billion roughly. Like I said, it could have been a little lower, a little higher than that when I first started buying that stock. Now it's over, you know, well over 100 billion. It might've been 30 billion when I bought this company, but regardless, 30, 40 billion. So what I was looking at is I said, based upon everything I'd looked into this company and where I thought this was going over time and it still has to play out over time, I think this company is gonna have, worst case scenario, a 25% market share if not a 50% market share of EVs in the future. What? 25 to 50% market share of EVs? Show me one company, one auto manufacturer that has even that close of dominance in any sector of any market. No, Tesla will never have between 25 and 50% of EVs. Now, you may say strong, man, they have that right now. Yes, because they're the first company to really mass market EVs. I mean, there's been some other ones, you know, but they, they weren't popular. Tesla really is the the vanguard, the leader of EVs. So right now, sure, maybe they have some kind of percentage in that range of EV market cap or EV uh, market dominance. But 5, 10, 15 years in the future, you think this one company is going to have between 25 and 50% of all EVs? This is ridiculous. It's stupid. Come on, little foo foo. And I believe that 100% or close to 100% of cars in the future uh, will be EVs. Okay, is that possible? Sure, but there's going to be a very, very long transition from internal combustion engines to EVs. How do I know this? Well, number one, EVs are expensive as crap, okay? Some companies are coming out with newer, cheaper models, which is great. But as of right now, what options do you have for EVs? They're all basically in the luxury auto market. The average family cannot afford an EV at this point in time. At some point in the future, I 100% believe that EVs will be much more affordable. 100%. But in the meantime, everybody isn't just going to flock to EVs right now because it's literally impossible, especially with inflation. It's impossible for people to afford EVs. It's crazy. It's There's no way. So this clown, his initial analysis is, okay, Tesla is going to own 25 to 50% of the global auto market. That's basically what he's saying. Because if 25 to 50% of EVs, that's what Tesla is going to produce, that's going to be their market share, and 100% of the future's cars are going to be EVs, well, Tesla is going to own between 25 and 50% of the future auto market globally. Holy freaking crap. This is the dumbest analysis I've ever seen. The auto industry is highly competitive. Go drive around. You guys have cars? Yeah, probably internal combustion engine cars because EVs are too expensive. Go drive around and look. Hmm, I see a lot of different auto manufacturers. And you go to Europe, there's a bunch there. You go to China, you go to India. There's, there's hundreds of auto manufacturers. So for this clown to say 25 to 50% of all EVs are going to be you know, produced, sold by Tesla. <laughs> it's a joke. This clown got lucky. That's it. So when I look at this, if I'm right about my bullish thesis here, everything I looked into and how many competitive advantages they have, once again, judging off fundamentals, looking at all that, understand the company on a high level versus their competitors. And he understands it on a high level. What is there to understand? Okay. He looked at the financials. It was unprofitable, but he has a stupid thesis. He just pulls these numbers out of his butt it says, oh, 25 to 50% of EVs and 100% of cars. And where are you getting these numbers from, you clown? This is, this is not analysis. This is gambling. This is stupid gambling. This is smoke and mirrors. This is putting, building a castle in the sky, a story. You're just saying, okay, I, I see this beautiful story. Tesla's going to take over the EV market. They're the only EV company in town. At some point, I hope, think, maybe, possibly, they're going to dominate the market. This is stupid. And I'm looking at trends, and I believe we're going to be 100% EVs in ter terms of new car sales, maybe even within 5 to 10 years, at least in, in 5 to 10 years? No, 
No. It, that is a common sense, obvious, stupid message that he's telling you. 100% of all new cars sold in 5 to 10 years are going to be EVs. Not with the prices they are now. It takes a lot of time. And a lot of people have a lot of different options and incomes. And they're going to say, hmm, they're going to weigh the cost of an EV versus the cost of an internal combustion engine. I just got a new Chrysler Pacifica. I paid $27,000, $28,000 for it. A little freaking expensive, yeah. But guess what? That's still half the freaking price of an EV. And this is during an insane market where used vehicles are massively expensive. So no, no. Five to 10 years, 100%. Internal combustion engine cars are going to die that quickly. That's not how it works, ladies and gentlemen. In the United States, I don't know, around the world's different, different markets, different uh, places. The United States is, will also be very similar to Europe in their EV adoption. So if I disagree. I, I think China and Europe are going to adopt EVs way faster than the United States by leaps and freaking bounds. We're going here in this company gets between a 25% and 50% market share of EVs. This company is going to be worth massively more than $40 billion, and it's not even close. Just looking at it from that perspective, not worrying about autopilot software, not worrying about robo-taxi networks, not worrying about uh, you know selling products through their computer screens, essentially, that are in the cars, not worrying about any of that. If just this, which I believe is going to happen, plays out, the company is going to be worth massively more than 30 to 40 billion dollars like where i bought this company at now he's right if tesla does capture between 25 to 50 percent of all ev sales the entire market and 100 percent of cars are evs oh of course he's right but think about it critically does this make sense with the amount of competition in the auto industry and the price of these cars does this make sense no it doesn't that's the problem with his investing. He comes up with stupid stories that make no logical sense. And once in a blue moon, he's right. But a lot of the times, he's wrong. Look at his investments. Tattooed Trucker's Ball Sack. Honest My Bonnest. Uh, Beyond the Truck Stop. All of these stocks, he did the same analysis. What's Tattooed Chef's market cap now? Tattooed Chef is going to control between 30 and 40% of all vegan sales. And uh, Tattooed Chef is, or 100% of meals in the future are going to be vegan meals. That's probably all he did to make the decision to buy Tattooed Chef. Ignoring the crappy gross margins, ignoring the slowing revenue growth. It's starting to slow down a little bit. And ignoring the fact that the food is extremely freaking expensive, number one. And it's in a highly competitive industry. <laughs> oh, and look what freaking happened. He got freaking wrecked. It's as simple as that. It's that, it's that simple, guys. Just gamble. This is the type of stuff I do when it comes to looking at a growth stock. Um, if we think about something, so, you know, just to cover Tesla once again, you know, you think about how many millions of cars, you know, 10 million to 20 million cars sold a year. You think about the average price of those cars, Tesla being able to be very profitable over time. If, you know, when they have a 25 to 50% market share, it's going to be, you know, a market capitalization at least in the hundreds of billions of dollars as long as now, forty billion for Tesla is actually reasonable. Like right now, that's what it. Sh I, I would say maybe I'll, I'll be nice and say a hundred billion. It's a luxury auto manufacturer. They're gonna peak out at some point. I don't care how profitable they are. At some point, they're gonna peak out, and they're not gonna be able to grow their sales that much. And their price to sales, price to earnings ratio is gonna massively decrease because the PE that they have right now is pricing in massive growth. But if there is no growth, people are not going to be willing to pay huge premiums for this stock. It's going to happen. I 100% guarantee you. And this whole video is going to look idiotic. He can't even spell fundamentals right, moron. Holy crap. Tesla maybe could be $200 billion, $250 billion market cap. If they become the same size as Toyota, which produces tens of millions of cars, sells tens of millions of cars. Holy crap. This is ridiculous. But no, sign up for his course, bro. $2,500 every two, uh, two years. Out. No, it still has to play out. You still have to get your fundamentals right. Um, you still have to make your decisions right. I'm going to give you another example of another stock here. Um, but this is how I really think. I really think about market capitalization versus potential, what I think their market capitalization could be based upon what I'm looking for fundamentally. So I bought into Upwork recently, right? Upwork. 
the company in the freelancing space. The freelancing space this is a space. What happened to Upwork? I really have no idea. Let's look. <laughs> Upwork stock. <laughs> okay, so it's down 55% in the past year. So it had this massive... Okay. Wow. It, it started running up during the pandemic. Look at that. March 2020. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen? Lockdowns, stimmy checks, printing money. And it freaking exploded. I'm a genius, bro. And now it's getting freaking wrecked. And what fundamentals are there? Negative 17% profit margin. They have revenue by revenue growth. Guys, come on. This, this is ridiculous. That hundreds of billions, okay? Hundreds of billions um, of basically transactions go through. So... We have hundreds of billions of dollars of TAM opportunity, you know, 500 billion or some, you know, insane number of TAM for Upwork to go through. Upwork, when I bought it, was what, right around a billion dollar market cap, roughly, somewhere around there. It's going up too fast, unfortunately, so I haven't got to. It's going up too fast. I made such a great decision. Okay, so he basically two and a half X. Good for him. But is the story going to play out? Is he actually going? Hopefully, he sold the stock. Another example of him getting lucky. Pandemic, printing money, stock goes up, but now we have this massive reversion to its long-term average growth rate. And looking at the fundamentals, a two-second glance at the profit margin. I'm not confident about this company's future. Negative 17% profit margin? What's going on here? Like, he just freaking gambled. He got lucky during the pandemic. And as you see, all his stocks have sold off. Oh, look at negative 13, negative 7, negative 16, negative 17. Hmm. Wow. Good job, Jeremy. I'm going to buy your course, bro. To buy as much as I wanted to buy. Um, but so I think it was somewhere around a billion dollar market cap. So when I looked at Upwork, I said, this is the company that is the leader, the leader in the space. They are the leader when it comes to essentially the new uh, freelance economy. Okay. Freelance economy. The number one player in this new freelance economy. Oh, a $1 billion dollar market cap, roughly. And there's going to be hundreds of billions of dollars of TAM over time in this category of freelancing. What's the probability Upwork's going to see a $2 billion, $5 billion, $10 billion valuation over time? Pretty high. As long as the company executes on a high level, there's a pretty high probability they're going to see a market capitalization much higher than $1 billion just based upon the fact that they're the number one player they're the number one company that companies are starting to look for when it comes to hiring freelance work. Or they could go out of business and dilute you so badly that all your gains are diluted away entirely. This guy's a freaking joke, okay? Sure, he's gotten lucky on some stocks, but at the end of the day, he benefited from the pandemic. All these stupid stocks went up, and he looked like a genius. All these other YouTubers did too. And now the chickens are coming home to roost. Now, there might be some run-up in the future again. But at the end of the day, if you own a fundamentally worthless company, I don't care what the market cap is. I don't care what the stock price is. If it's burning money, if it's unprofitable, if it's diluting you, it's trash. I don't care. He, he's going to look good at some point. One of his stocks is going to run up for some reason. And he's going to claim he was a genius. But if I look at the company and I don't see the metrics I want to see, like profitability... It's trash. It's as simple as that, okay? So that was an interesting view, interesting look into Jeremy Financial Education's investment strategy, which is just basically revenue growth, future, stupid assumptions. 50% EVs are going to be sold of t by Tesla, and they're going to control 50% of the market at some point. Idiot. <laughs> All right, that's it. Like, subscribe, tell your friends about me. I'll talk to you later. Cheers!